This video is going to be extremely long, so I have put timestamps up on the screen if you do want to go to a specific place to learn something. I'd also recommend pausing the video and re-watching anything you need if you haven't fully understand it, or you just want to learn more about it. Feel free to pause the video, go back a little bit, and just re-watch it. Hey guys, and welcome to the beginner's guide on how to win the newly reworked Last Man Standing games, or just improve your try burning game. I'm going to try and make this as noob friendly as possible so even who's somebody who's never PK'd before can hopefully get into it and start having fun. If you're more of an advanced triber this video probably isn't for you but you can still watch it and give any tips yourself to other people in the comments section as well. This took a lot of time to work on so I hope you guys do learn something from it and if you do feel free to leave a like and subscribe to see my future videos. I'm going to break this video up into order of how I feel you should approach uh, learning PKing and LMS and the different things you need to learn and I will leave timestamps to everything that I go over in the description of this video as well. Hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Now before you even join an LMS game on the beta worlds, there are some things you probably want to get set up before even going to do that. Likely you want to turn down all your sounds if you don't play with them, and you want to set your F keys. Now I'm going to assume most of you guys know what F keys are, but if you don't, these are like F keys you can press on your keyboard that will change you to a different tab. So right now my F5 sets me to prayer. Now. Here are the F keys I personally use, but if you guys have your own already that you use for PVM and stuff like that, honestly just keep them because you're probably going to have better muscle memory to it and it will just make sense to keep doing what you're natural with. But here's what I set my F keys to. Personally, I set my F4 to magic, my F3 to prayer, my F1 to inventory, my F5 to my attack styles, and my F2 to my gear setup. The rest don't really matter. These are only all you need uh, to get into tri burning. So I'm just gonna let you guys look at that for a second and set it up however you want because you do not wanna be clicking these tabs when you're doing stuff. You wanna be using your F keys to go to the different setups. Now the next thing you wanna do is set up your XP drops. If you guys are on a third party client, that could also do it for you. But you want your XP drops open so you can see what you're about to hit as it really helps uh, PKing and like deciding what to do next. And this is personally just how I set up my XP drops. You definitely want to get this started before you even enter a game. Now this next one is definitely up to you, but if you haven't PK'd since Augury and Rigor got released, or you only PK on like a Pure or a Zerker, or you don't even have Augury and Rigor, you most likely still click your Mystic Might, which is in this spot, and your Eagle Eye, which is in this spot, and that's just where your muscle memory is. So what you could do is use a third party client like Runelight to switch your prayers so that your Augury is here and your Eagle Eye is here. Now obviously I'm not condoning all the third party clients, but everyone does seem to use it. And this could make your game a little bit easier rather than having to learn the new prayer positions of Rigor there and Augury there. Just a small tip, I personally do it, but you don't have to. And finally, I'd recommend disabling the spell filter on your spell book. Once again, this is just personal preference if you have PK'd before it was updated. I personally think it will be easier to get your prayer on and do your barrages if you don't have the spell filter for you but you can if you'd like to. Once again, it's just personal preference, but this is how I have it. So once you've done all that, you're ready to play the game. So right click Lisa, click join and go to a casual lobby and you should be put into a game within a minute, depending on how active the world is. Now, when you first spawn into the game, you have a 20 second grace timer. And in this time, you definitely want to set up your inventory because the starting inventory you get probably isn't the best to learn PKing. Now, if you guys already do some PKing, feel free to set it up how you enjoy it. But if you guys don't really know what you're doing and you want to look at what I have, this is personally how I set it up and I'm going to explain why. Now as we go deeper into this video, I'm going to be mentioning sitting in your tank quite a bit, which is obviously sitting in your tank gear to take less damage. And from this, it's obviously the black tea head body and the rune plate legs. Now I have them set up in a vertical line like that just under the rune crossbow so I can very easily just click those two and get my tank gear on and already reduce the amount of damage I'm taking. I have the rune crossbow right, right on top of the black dead body, so I can always click on it very easily right on top of my uh, tank switch, and it's very easy to go from mage to range just like that. Having the gear set up like this also makes your melee switch easier as your whip is right on the right of your black dead body and the dragon defender is on the right of your rune plate legs, and you can do a four-way switch like that very easily. Now, I have the Dragon Dagger right under the Rune Plate Legs and diagonal to the Dragon Defender. So this is when I want to go in for a spec. I can do the Tank Switch again, and I can then do the Dragon Dagger and Defender Switch as easy as possible. You can move the Dragon Dagger to wherever it feels more comfortable, but I personally prefer it just like that. And this is how I think you should set up your switches, but obviously, if you have a personal preference, feel free to go with that. Now, one thing you want to do in the grace period as well as set up your inventory is set your attack styles, mostly the rune crossbow from accurate to rapid as when you log into the game, everything's going to be on accurate and you probably want to change uh, your crossbow. Well, you definitely want to change your crossbow to rapid and you probably want to change your whip and defender to the aggressive style as well. 
and then you can finally start getting into the fights. So the basic idea around tri-breeding is you always want them to hit you when you're praying the right thing and when you're tank when you're in your tank gear. And you want to hit them when they're not praying the right thing and most likely in their robes if possible. This is why I don't think you should spam click your opponent and try and get the first hit right away. I want you guys to sit in your tank which includes your ancient staff which is really great mage defense and I want you guys to be looking at your prayer tab and the opponent. So as soon as you see what he's going to do you get the right prayer on. So you can see I have pray mage on there he doesn't change so I keep it on. Now the moment he casts that barrage I switch into my robes and I go for my freeze. Now even though I didn't catch the freeze what happened here is he hit me on my tank and on my right prayer so the chances of him hitting high were not that great. I hit him on his robes and off prayer, which means I could have hit a 30 barrage right there and hit my max because he was not in his tank here and he wasn't praying the right thing. So the most important part about this is sitting in your tank when getting hit. You want to have your augury prayer on as well if possible because that gives you the same defense bonuses as piety does and it also gives you magic defense. You also want to be wielding your ancient staff if possible, not just your rune crossbow because that also gives you defense bonuses and that could make the difference and it's just a good habit of getting into especially if you want to get into the more advanced spreading later it's just good habits to have now i recommend you rewatch this fight a couple times because i think it's a pretty good example of how to win your first fight i'm almost always sitting in my tank on the right prayer for when they hit me to reduce the amount of damage and right after that i'm switching into a different attack style to what they're praying and going for the hit right away which usually does a lot of damage and i switch back to my tank right away to reduce the damage I'm doing and you can see like the counter of the times I'm hitting him off prayer versus the time he hits me off prayer and that's why I built such an HP advantage over him as you can see I literally have not eaten in this fight he's eaten quite a bit and because he's got the royal prayers he ends up getting KO'd now that you have a basic idea on how to win your fights and how to try bird I'm just going to give you a little bit more tips and tricks on how to make yourself a little bit unpredictable and leave less room for error as well as get the most out of your hits. Now, if you are fast, this isn't needed, but obviously most of you guys watching this video probably don't PK a lot and this tip might help you out. Uh, as you can see in this clip, I am always putting on my offensive prayer before I go in for the attack style. So I'll be sitting in my tank, I will switch to the offensive prayer and then I will do the switch and attack the person. So for example, if I'm going in for a bolt, I'll make sure I have the rigor on and then I will switch to my range gear and go in for the bolt. This means there's like two less things I have to do. I don't have to F3 to go to my prayer tab. I don't actually have to click the prayer. It means I can just do my switch and attack the person. Now, because as you get a little bit more advanced PK, you don't always have to do this because you are quick enough to get the prayer on after every single time. But when you're just starting off, it's a very good habit to get into that you first change your prayer and then you go in for the attack, not after. It makes it a lot more simpler and it does allow you to hit harder as well. Now doing this will also allow you guys to one tick your attack styles a little bit easier. Now if you guys don't know what a one tick is, basically this game works on a tick based system and every one tick is 0.6 seconds. Now obviously one tick in an attack style is switching your gear, prayer and attacking the person all in the same tick so they don't really have time to react to it and put on their prayer. Now obviously if you switch your offensive prayer the tick before, all you have to do is go into your gear and attack the person all in one tick and it makes it a little bit simpler to do because you've, you've already got your offensive prayer on. As you get quicker, you might be able to do this the other way around and put your prayer on after, but it's just a good habit to get into of switching your offensive prayer before. So when the tick comes around, you can uh, one tick your attack style. So getting a little bit more advanced to get a better lead over your opponents, you wanna start faking out your opponents into praying the wrong thing. This is when you purposely show them a weapon to make them pray that prayer and then uh, switch attack styles very quickly and attack them with that so you'll most likely get them off prayer. Now there are a bunch of different fakies you can do as you start learning and you can honestly keep creating your own fakies but the most common one is probably if you have a good uh, spec weapon like Claws, AGS or a VLS you can pull out that weapon and walk towards them and more likely than not they will pray melee as they don't want to get hit a big number and at the last second you can go in for the bolt with uh, rigor on and it probably is the easiest one to do. Another easy one to do is when you're in your range gear, you can keep your rigor on, very quickly do a straight line switch to your mage gear, and then go right back to your ball, and they might pray mage on that, and you get the ball off prayer. Uh, the third most common one to do is you're in your mage gear, you switch to your range, and you very quickly go back to your mage and cast the barrage. Those are very three common ones to do. Once you uh, start learning more, there's more stuff you can do, obviously. Uh, one I personally like to do is when I'm in my mage gear, I'll fakey them out with my melee with like my rapier or my whip, and then I'll go in for the barrage very quickly. Or as you keep learning, you can just do a bunch of other stuff. But those are probably the three more simpler ones. And it is a good way to get them off prayer, especially if the other PKer is like quite new as well. 
it does help you out to gain a lead and gain an HP advantage over your opponent to fakie them out and just try different things. See what works for you. All right, I'm going to continue talking about how to get uh, better within your after tribrid skill a little bit later on in the video. Right now, I want to talk about the upgrades and how to use them to your advantage. So obviously, there are two different ways to get upgrades. Right now, I'm going to be talking about when you get a kill, you get a key and you can take this to any chest and you will get one offensive item and one defensive item. Now, I'm just going to put a list of both of these up on the screen now for you guys to look at real quickly. And then I'll start discussing which one of these you guys want to take which one you guys may want to ignore when you're first starting out and which ones are really up to you. So here are the items. Okay, so I've broken these items up into three different lists. Now I'm gonna go ahead and say that the offensive items to take is pretty self-explanatory apart from the mages book, which I will be explaining to you a little bit more in depth later on. It is hard to learn, but I still think everyone should take it. Um, offensive items depending on your skill. Now the Elder Maul is a very good weapon if you use it correctly. It's meant to sort of be like a high hitting weapon. Uh, it can hit like above 50s in this gear, I'm pretty sure. But some people may prefer the DPS of the Whip and Defender more than the actual KO potential of the Elder Maul. But sometimes an Elder Maul can come through with the clutch moments and hit you a big number to win the fight. So that really does depend on whether you want to take it or not. Now the next one is the Dark Bow. I personally really never take a Dark Bow unless I'm uh, messing around. It is kind of inconsistent, but sometimes you can take it, use it to fakie someone out because they might pre range on your Dark Bow, and then you can spec with like an AGS or Claws or something like that. The Debo also can hit like a 40-40, so it really is up to you if you guys want to take it. Now the last one, and probably the most controversial one on this list, is the Heavy Ballista. Now I personally always upgrade from the Rune Crossbow to a Heavy Ballista, but it is very hard to learn how to use it properly. And if you are just starting starting out to Brid, I don't think you should take it. I think you should keep the crossbow. It'd probably be easier to learn. But if you are a little bit more of an advanced Brid, I'd say use the Heavy Ballista if you know how to. Now, the only item on this list you should never take is the Gmall. Sure, it can get you a nice 30, 30, 30 KO, but that's probably not gonna happen. The DDS has four specs that can all hit pretty hard. And because this is like an outlast sort of competition, the DDS will almost always be better than the GMO, and it's never worth taking. Um, you should always upgrade from a DDS to other spec weapons such as the Claws or the AGS, however. Now, I did forget to mention the Infernal Cape, and I would most likely say to you guys to not take it if you're just starting off. I personally do use it and incorporate it into my switches, but it's probably not worth it. And if you don't use it correctly, you're going to end up maging in your Infernal Cape by mistake, and you lose like 15 mage offense uh, bonuses. So it's just probably not worth it if you're just starting off. Especially if you get a mage's book, the switches sort of become too much. You want to keep it as simple as possible, and the Infernal Cape probably isn't worth it for starting off. Okay, so these are the two lists for defensive items, and I'm going to quickly explain why you should never take a Daurox Helm. It does have a little bit better bonuses, uh, like defensive bonuses, than a Helm of Neat's Knot, which you start with, but it is quite bad compared to the Gothet's Helm, Torox Helm, and Varex Helm. And a lot of people don't actually know this because they just think all that the Barrow's melee helms have the same defense bonuses. The Darox Helm actually has significantly worse uh, bon defense bonuses than all the other Barrow's Helms. And honestly, using a Helm of Nezi is definitely more worth it than taking the Darox Helm. Now, the defensive items you should take are pretty self-explanatory, but I'm just going to quickly explain that Barrow's legs like Torax, Darox, and Varax are all better than Bando's Tacits. But if you get Bando's Tacits before you get Barrow's Legs, definitely use them over the Rune Plate Legs as they do give some pretty nice defense bonuses as well. Everything else is pretty self-explanatory. Just replace your starter gear with what you get and it should be pretty easy for you to do. So on screen now is a map of the Last Man Standing World and the red circles indicate where the loot crates spawn when they do. So basically when you're in a Last Man Standing game, every couple minutes or so a magical loot crate uh, will appear on the map and it will be like highlighted in yellow on your screen and it will be in one of these locations and it will say where either the Debtor hideout, the Rocky outcrop, the Moser settlement, the mountain or the Trinity outpost. And they only have a couple uh, like spawn locations at each place. So it is pretty easy to find. You can, I'll link this map in the description. You can have it up all the time until you finally learn where everything is. And basically these loot crates can give you one item off the offensive or defensive uh, roll, but they can also give you a PVP weapon of a zero staff Morgan's Javelins, a VLS, or a Status Warhammer, and they can give you these at any time, even when there's 24 people in the game, which is why they're very worth to go for, because if you get something like a Zuriel Staff or a Vesta Longsword, like, towards the start of the game, or even towards the end, it is very strong and will help you secure the win. If you guys are wondering, the Zuriel Staff is better than a Kodai for cash and phrases, in my opinion. A VLS is obviously, like, the best melee weapon just to use and to spec with, and the Status Warhammer is also very good just to use and to spec with. It's a little bit worse than the VLS, however. 
But if you get one of these weapons, it's going to help you out so much. So if you're not in fight and you see this notification and you have the map open, run towards it and see what you can get because even if you don't get a PvP weapon, you might get an upgrade that you really need. So it's very worth like knowing these locations and knowing how to get there. So earlier on I talked about the Mage's Book and now I'm just going to explain a little bit about it. So I've been lurking in streams and Twitter recently and I see three common issues with people in the Mage's Book. One, they don't take it because they prefer the defense bonuses of the Spirit Shield. Two, they camp the Mage's Book and don't even use the Spirit Shield and take a lot of damage because it doesn't really have any defensive bonuses. Or three, they don't know where to put the switch and it messes up their inventory. So this is personally how I make my switches once I have that fourth switch of a Mage's Book. I keep my tank in the exact same position, but I bring my crossbow down and I move my melee across and then I put my Mage's Book under my crossbow, like in my inventory, like so. You can do it however you guys feel like, but I think this is probably easy to learn and quite simple to do. And honestly, what you do doesn't change that much. When you go in for a barrage, you switch to your robes, but this time you also put the Mage's Book on before putting the barrage. And right after you cast it, you go right back to tank and you put the Spirit Shield back on as well. The Spirit Shield is your tank shield now. It's now your tank. The Mage's Book is for offense and you have to switch right back to your tank right after, just like any other time. So it's pretty simple to do, honestly. Sure, it's one extra click, but it does help out. The Mage's Book gives plus 15 Mage offense and that really does help, especially when you're still in Mystics and stuff like that or you've got like an ancient staff. It just gives you that extra bonus to help you catch the freezes with. All right, now we're gonna cover what to do when you're being DD Britted or you're being hugged. And obviously DD Britting is when they freeze you, step under you, and like they, you can't see what they're attacking you with and they walk under right away after they do with attack style. And hugging is like the same thing except they run around a tree or a wall or something. And the reason this is so effective is because you can't actually barrage them unless you're spam clicking. And uh, they always get the first hit on you. Like they, they dictate when to attack you and stuff like that. Now, there are there is a way to counter DD Birding, and I'm showing one of the ways right now. I literally just spam my barrages so that I'm clicking a barrage on him every single tick. So whenever he walks out, I'm going to cast a barrage on him. Now, obviously, once you've frozen them, it's back to being a normal fight, and they can't DD Brid you anymore until they catch that next freeze on you, where you can just try and do this again, and it should be a pretty normal fight. However, this might not always work because splashes. Honestly, this depends on how much mage bonus you have and how much mage defense they have. For example, if you have like Arams and a Staff of Dead, or honestly just Arams, for sure, go for it. But if you're in the starting Mystic setup and the guy you're, uh, the guy on you has a Staff of Dead and like a Carol's Top, that's some very good mage defense and you'll probably end up splashing a lot of the freezes. So honestly, it is very, uh, it's very RNG based. It has to do with luck and what gear you're in. So it might not always be the best decision to do. Also, you have to be very accurate with your clicks to get a barrage off every single tick. So it does depend on whether you think you're actually gonna catch that freeze once it casts. Now, option two is honestly just to stand there and spam both or spam rapier or like whip them back. Now they can walk out diagonally, which means you can't actually hit them with your uh, melee. So you'll honestly just have to spam bolt. So if you can go for the freeze, I definitely recommend it. But I think if you're just starting out, you should just focus on getting your prayers correctly, like uh, guessing which prayers they're gonna hit you with and just honestly trying to do some damage with your bolts. And once you're unfrozen, try and catch a freeze right away so they can't start DD birding you again. But once you got a little bit more advanced, feel free to go for that freeze and make the fight fair once again. Now, when you're being hugged, it's a little bit different, but the principles are still the same. What it, when you're being hugged, he's frozen and he's running around something like a tree or something. You can still spam click your barrages and you will still be able to cast them. And uh, you can, like, obviously you can still catch the barrages on them. And honestly, it's a little bit easier than when you're being DD'd because uh, you can see them coming. And sometimes you honestly don't even have to spam the barrages. You can just time it for when they're going to come in for the tick if you're good enough to do that. But you can also just spam the barrages. Also, because you see them coming, you can also change your prayers in time if you need to. So honestly, being hugged is a lot easier to counter than being DD'd because you can see them coming, you can get your prayer on, and you can also time your barrages. Now, obviously, the rules for maging is the same as DD'ing. It depends on the mage bonus and whether you think you're going to catch that freeze. If you try it a couple times, you're getting frustrated. Just sit in your tank, start bolting them back, wait for the freeze to run out. And obviously, if these guys are DD'ing on you or hugging you, you can do the exact same back to them. There's no rule against it catch the freeze, start going in for the hugs. I personally don't actually hug or DD that much because I prefer my opponent to see my switches so that I can fake them out. But once again, this is just personal preference. If you guys don't think you're good enough at faking and you'd rather DD Britting or a hug Brit to slow down the pace of the fight, go ahead and do that. Once again, these two options are very much personal preference and up to the style of how you want to PK. There's no one way to do it right. I personally like them seeing my switches so that I can fake them out. 
and honestly I don't think DDing and hugging is that effective if you do get frozen all the time anyway. Now I'm going to talk about eating. Now you may be thinking, why do you need to talk about eating? Just eat your food when you're low HP. I'm going to explain it to you. So basically when you spawn into LMS, you have a set inventory. I think it's like 12 sharks, one brew, and two ones. And there's a lot of different combos and a lot of different ways you can use this food to your advantage. Now, a lot of people ask me how to PK with brews and what's the best way to use them. So there are two different ways you can use brews. You can either use them for combo eating. And a combo eat in this inventory that can get you a lot of HP back is a shark, brew, karambon. If you click your shark, then your brew, then your karambon, you can eat all three of these in one tick. And I'm pretty sure that heals like 50 something HP, 54. I don't know the exact HP of the karambon. But yeah, it's above 50 HP if you eat all three of these in one tick. You can also just shark karambon. You only have two karambons and you only have uh, four brew doses. So you could do like two shark brew karambons and then two shark brews and then you'll be out of brews and out of karambons. A little bit confusing, I know, but that's the, that's the best way I know how to put it. I personally don't like to use it as combo food. I prefer to use my brews as I'm fighting. So for example, if we've just started the fight, we're both down a little bit of HP. You can sit a brew dose and still carry on fighting. Like you can still keep bolting them. You could go in for a blitz. And then you could sip another brew dose. You can still bolt or melee them even though your mage is brewed down. Because as you drink brews, your stats do go down. So you do need to drink a super restore after you're done brewing and repot up. Make sure that's crucial. You always want to be potted up. But I prefer to use my brews in a way where I'm still doing damage while using them. I only really use it for combo food if I'm losing the fight by a little bit. And I need to get my HP back up so I don't lose too much momentum in the fight. All right, those are all the major points I think I'm going to cover in this video. There's a lot more stuff to get into, but I think I'm just going to keep this a beginner guide as if I try and get into more and more advanced stuff, the video is going to be an hour long and the people who are trying to learn just the basics will end up getting confused and probably a little bit more demotivated. So I'm just going to say a couple more short tips that honestly don't need their whole like whole video clip part about it. Just some things you should know that when you're getting into the fight, when you're getting into fights that you should be aware of so you can have the best chance at winning. First off, Keep it simple, it's better to have accurate switches than fast switches, you don't have to be spamming your switches at all points. Just make sure they're accurate and then when you do do something, you do it right. If you're losing the fight, stay calm, don't just like tunnel vision, pray melee and start eating your food. Be aware of what they're attacking you with so you're not still taking damage while you're eating up. You can eat your food and switch prayers at the same time so you don't take too much damage while tanking. Try and keep your opponent frozen. If you're being very unlucky, just try and get damage done with melee and range, but try and keep them frozen as much as possible. Now, when people brew, their magic defense actually decreases quite a bit as they brew because obviously your magic defense is off your mage level. So if you see someone brewing against you, try and capitalize and fake heat with barrages because as they brew down, your barrages will hit more often. You should never be 100% spec in a fight. Always use like a spec at the start of the fight so you regenerate and finish the fight with 0% spec so you make the most out of it. You should always be finishing a fight with 0% spec. Like I said before, make sure you're prayer switching while you're eating or tanking. And a big one, the game is RNG based. You're gonna get frustrated and irritated sometimes. Don't let it demotivate you. Take a break, try again later. Just like RNG, it will, sometimes you'll get very lucky as well and it'll make you very, very happy. Now I'm sure a lot of you guys still use your F keys for other stuff. So make sure you're just constantly using them. Never be clicking on your tabs. Use F keys to switch at it. It'll make you faster all around. Whenever you're not attacking someone and you are being attacked and you're taking damage, make sure you're always sitting in your tank. I don't know how important it is to stress this. Even if you get the prayer wrong, sitting in your tank will help you take less damage. This is a big one. Don't be afraid to fight better PKers. Only way you're gonna get better is by fighting them. And right now it's in the beta. Take advantage of that fact. Fight better be cares, see what they're doing, and you will be able to learn through them. Now this is another big one, keep your HP above 70 and don't get KO'd is a, is a, you know, it's easier said than done. Just be aware of what your opponent's spec weapon is, be aware of when they're frozen and not, and make sure you're eating when you need to. When your opponent is eating, take advantage and try and keep doing damage through fakies and specs. They may not be focusing on you, they might just be focusing on eating and praying melee. So keep mage faking and keep range faking. Try and capitalize and do as much damage as possible. And the final one, don't die to fog like Tavesta. Be aware of where the final area is. Like, like it's Deadman mode, honestly, because there's different areas where the end is. And constantly make your way there after each fight so you don't take too much damage from the fog. Once again, the map is linked in the description. Anyway. That is it for today's tips and tricks video on LMS on how to become honestly a better Brit and how to win LMS games.
All right, guys, I'm going to be honest. That video did take a lot out of me. I spent a lot of time working on this. So if you guys learned anything or you did just enjoy the video or you're going to share it with a friend who's going to start PKing because of it, make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you are new so you don't miss a video. Comment down below what you thought or any other tips you have for me. Obviously, there was a, a bunch more stuff that I could have included, but the video might have been too long. So if you guys do want a part two of this with like some more advanced stuff, let me know in the comments. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. Thank you guys so much for watching.